Hi everyone and thank you for joining us um, on this afternoon's webinars. This is a deep dive into the 2023 product guide. Um, we'll get started as we've just uh, come to four o'clock but we may get a few more people joining us in a bit. Um, so I'm Nicola Cook, um, I'm from Simmons Skills and I'm your host for this afternoon's webinar. In a moment I'm going to introduce you to Marie who's going to be taking us through the new product guide and all the products contained inside it. But just before we get started make sure your microphone stays on mute and just to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be sent to you. And um, so we have a chat function. Um, so you can say hello, as some people are doing already, which is great. But please use this chat function to ask any questions you would like. Um, we will do a bit of a Q&A at the end of the session. But as we go through each product, if there's a question that pops up and you think, oh, I'd like an answer to that right now while we're talking about this product, then we can answer those questions as we go along as well. So just a little bit about us uh, before we get started. Um, so as I said, we're Simmons Skills and we specialize in medical simulators and clinical skills trainers. We work with NHS trusts, universities and organizations across the UK. But during this past year, we've been supporting lots of colleges or schools who are teaching or about to teach T-level health. Um, so we've been working closely with colleges to help them to decide which products they need to teach the curriculum. Probably as you've seen already, there's a huge amount of choice out there and the guides that you get have a huge list of things that you could you could buy. So the aim of this webinar is to kind of break that down a little bit and highlight some of the products that we think will present the best value to you. And we've matched them up to the curriculum as much as we possibly can to make it really straightforward for you as well. So um, I'm going to introduce you to Marie now. So Marie's our T-level health expert, no pressure, <laughs> Marie. <laughs> um, and she's been working with lots of colleges um, for the past six to nine months. Um, she's a former healthcare professional specializing in clinical skills and has worked as a clinical skills trainer. And she's helped set up um, simulation suites um, across the country. So I'm going to let Marie talk you through the product guide. Hi everybody, um, thank you so much for coming today. This is uh, It's great to see you all and for those who are watching it on record as well, thank you for taking the time to watch it. Um, so as Nicola said, I'm the expert in inverted commas because you know we're all quite new to T-level so um, you know we're, we're all learning as we go along. Um, but these are the, uh, the main parts of what you would want in your sim suite in your colleges so uh, to get started obviously you want it to look like a ward so we've got the hospital bed suite for healthcare simulation um, so it has the bed obviously it comes with the mattress it has the bedside cabinet with folding trays so you don't have to buy extra furniture for that um, and then when it comes obviously if you're going to set up a ward you're going to you're going to need the bed but it's also it helps to know how it works with your curriculum so um if you think of your manual handling and um you know getting patients on and off beds um things like that so that's obviously one of the most important things <clears throat> the beauty of these beds as well is that they're actually made in the uk so if you uh one of these people who, who do care about your carbon footprint, you're going to have a nice little carbon footprint for these beds. That's what I like about them. <laughs> so there are beds. So I've just got a quick question about the beds for you, Marie, because we do get a few queries, particularly if you're working in, a, in an old building. Um, the beds are pretty big. Um, so do we offer any help to get the beds into the building if you've got a building that's a little bit antiquated? Um, yeah, I, I, that can be arranged. Uh, there's, an, there's an extra cost um, to help the company who make the beds, like I say, they are made in the UK, they can come along and dismantle them, put them in and, and whatever the opposite of dismantle, build them back up for you. Um, so that is possible. The beds are 2.2 metres long. So um, if you've got the choice of where you're going to put your sim suite, bear that in mind that these are 2.2 metres long and you've got to get them through your doors and everything. Um, obviously, the closer to the entrance to the building, the better for the sim suite, though I know life doesn't really work that way and you just get given a room and deal with it. So, yeah, it is possible, um, but there is a, an extra cost if you do need that extra help.
Okay, so we also have the, we have emergency crash carts for simulation. We have them in a five and a six draw. These have got simulated medications in there. So it, it's literally, you know, for the liquids, it's, it's, it's kind of water and, you know, you've got drug packets. They're not actual drugs. So not to worry about any kind of problems with that. Um, so obviously this works with the curriculum for managing stock levels and understanding the importance of correct storage of drugs and things like that also adds to the um to the whole setting of having a ward the other thing we've got are simulated head walls so <clears throat> if you, obviously you've probably been to a hospital these things that you have above the bed again yes it helps with the realism it looks more like a ward but in some scenarios you need to know that 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 student is going to be a proficient practitioner and they're going to ask for help when they need help. So, you know, there's a call button on there on the simulated head, ward, uh, head wall. So it's possible that if you're doing a scenario and you want to check that this student is going to be a safe practitioner, that's one of the things you're going to want them to do is to press a call button and ask for help. You've also got suction, medical air, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, they're our simulated head walls. So onto sim screens. So these are, um, they, were, they were slightly overlooked when we first started helping people get their sim suites up and running. Um, you know, you have, you have your ESPs to do, people need to be assessed in doing things with the patient. And the problem is, when they're being watched by someone else, one, it kind of puts them on, on edge because they think, oh God, they're watching us. The other thing is, if it's your tutor who's watching you and you're being assessed, the, the likelihood is the student's gonna keep looking up at the, at the uh, assessor and you know, at the lecturer because they're looking for kind of confirmation that they're doing it right. That's not gonna do them any favors when it comes to their sitting their tests. So the reason we have the SIM screens is they're like a two-way mirror. So you sit behind um, the screen and you can see everything, but they can't see you. So that, you know, especially when you start practicing with this, after a few run-throughs, they're gonna stop looking for you because they can't see you anyway. So they're gonna get out of that habit and they're gonna become more confident um, <clears throat> practitioners by doing that. Um, Naresh, thank you for saying that. Yeah, the screens are a really good idea. We have the tabletop one, as you can see in that picture. We have full ones, as there's also there. You can make a full wall. Um, but yeah, they're really, really helpful for helping the students stop looking for confirmation, really, and to, and to help lower the nerves as well. So responsive mannequins. So we get a lot of questions about responsive mannequins. And here at Sim Skills, we have so many mannequins. We, we really do. Um, but the ones that we recommend for T-levels are these. So we have uh, the Juno mannequin. This is um, made by CAE, who we have a great working relationship with. And these are perfect for T-level. Um, they have interchangeable male and female parts so you can actually make it a you know a lady or a man not just in the genitalia area but you can actually there's a different chest you can put on there's different wigs if you want to get a bit fancy you can always get yourself a couple of wigs off amazon so they've got a nice pink afro or something like that um so you know you can make it look any any way you like um, the beauty of mannequins before i go into juno really is that it helps the students really think about this as a person you know so the more realistic with the wigs and everything they are the more likely they're going to think of that as a person in the bed and treat them accordingly <clears throat> rather than thinking oh it's just a a weird looking doll um so yeah so juno she's nice and mobile she's light or there because it's both um you can practice uh, manual handling, you can practice moving them around because she's got uh, realistic movement of joints in the hips, knees, ankles, shoulders and elbows. Um, she can even sit up on their own. They have breath and heart and bowel sounds, so that adds to the realism. So with, you know, they can listen to these with the stethoscope. Um, 
they, it has been brought out to help nursing education and T levels. You can do a range of skills from vascular access and medication. You could do tracheostomy tube placement. Obviously, that's maybe a bit advanced for T level, but care of tracheostomies is not necessarily advanced because, as a uh, healthcare assistant, caring for patients with tracheostomy tubes inserted is part of their role. Um, and obviously, this helps with the six C's of patient centered care. Um, so let's see if you anybody can remember what the six C's are of patient centered care. Just put you on the spot there. Just to let you know, when I worked in the NHS, even I couldn't remember the six C's. So if you can't remember them, <laughs> don't worry about it. But if anyone can throw out one of the C's of the six C's, that would be great. Um, and I'll let you know. Let's have a look. Oh, Naresh is on it. Care, communication, commitment, courage. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Do you know what the other two are? Honestly, if we were giving out gold stars, I'd be totally giving that to you there. That's brilliant. Um, you're still thinking. You, I tell you what, to get far off the bat is pretty impressive. I only got three yesterday when I was trying to remember. And I've worked in healthcare. <coughs> Um, so the other thing we do know, she has, uh, you know, because when you're thinking of communication, which was one of your six C's you've got there, um, you're looking at your nonverbal communication as well as your verbal communication. Um, confidence, is that one? No, it's, should I tell you? Should I, should I put you out of misery? The ones that are missing are compassion and what else is missing? Competence. Bit like confidence, but it's confidence. <laughs> Uh, but well done. Um, yeah, so nonverbal and verbal communications. Do you, you can actually have do no talking. So it comes with a tablet, which I'll show you in a bit. And you can have her saying things like she'll say, oh, I'm in pain or it's cold in here. Or, you know, so she has various and you can have like male or female voices. Um, so you've got that communication. And yeah, you've also got ostomy care. NG tube insertion and yeah, she's also got she has a pulse as well doesn't she Nicola on one of her arms she has a pulse yeah I thought she did getting confused with the other one um so yeah like she's literally all singing all dancing that's what that's what we've got with Juno and we also have a more souped up version which is I'm just, I mean, this may answer the question, but we've just had a question about whether Juno is available in different skin tones. Um, and this is a relation of Juno, this is Aries. And as you can see, we do have different skin tones. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can get different skin tones for both Juno and Aries. Um, yes, you can set the pulse rate with the Maestro tablet, which I'll come to after this slide. So this is Aries. The difference with Aries is their eyes move and the eyes are amazing uh we were at a conference in november all of us and we had aries with us and um people were just drawn in by the eyes um you can have them bloodshot they can show signs of jaundice they can be droopy they can you know they're, they're responsive you can almost you're kind of lifting the eyelid but you don't really and they're responsive to light and things like that so yeah, the sim eyes are pretty, pretty amazing. Um, you can have cataracts in them as well. But also Aries also does spontaneous breathing. You can do CPR. You can perform CPR with Aries. You've got your pulses in uh, as well. You've got the one in the neck as well as the one in the arm. Um, and again, obviously, this still covers the six C's of patient-centered care. and obviously the range of non-verbal and verbal communications so it's more of a it, it's it's Juno and then some Aries so there's a bit of a difference between them two but yeah you can set the pulse rate and they are available in other skin tones so Maestro yeah yeah absolutely you can use um, them from role play for ESP in year one that I would suggest getting 
either a Juno or an Aries straight away. So you get used to using it. So it, be, it almost becomes the most beloved patient that you've got on your simulated ward, that people coming in there and they're used to seeing it and they're used to working with her. Um, you know, the, and the more comfortable the students are with, with either Aries or Juno and the more comfortable you are using it, the better the experience is going to be for everybody. So yeah, I'd say definitely be good for the role play especially as you can have them talk and you can also talk through them. So you can, there's a library of, of sayings, but if that doesn't cover what you want, you can actually talk through it. Yeah. The conversation and communication skills. Absolutely. Yeah. You can sit and talk through the mannequins. So yeah, you can get it out of them what you need to. So Maestro is the, uh, simulation software that comes with it. It comes with two tablets and there's the controlling one where you can set everything. You can do the talking and everything. You can set the pulse rate, everything you need to do, change the eyes, all sorts. It is very intuitive, so don't be scared off by the software. Um, I'm, I'm not the most software friendly person, but even I could manage to work it out without reading a manual. And let's be honest, nobody's reading manuals, are they? Um, and then there's the um, the other tablet, which is like the patient monitor that goes with it. So you've got one that you're going to change things on and one that they're going to see things on. Um, so how does this fit with your curriculum? So you can recognise the signs and symptoms of a person who is whose well-being is deteriorating. You know, if they're with the vital signs that, you know, the, the BP might be elevated, the oxygen sats might be going down. You may have a speaking saying, so cold or whatever she says <laughs> um or sometimes they're like she does a cry which does sometimes sound like a laugh an hysterical laugh um so yeah so that's how you can recognize the signs and symptoms and obviously you're still doing your six C's all of the time because there's your communication in there and your compassion for the person who's in pain and everything um so yeah that's uh maestro that comes with both juno and aries so onto CPR, excuse me, just re, re my whistle. So for CPR, we have quite a range of CPR products, but these are the two that we found are most um, bought by colleges over this past year. These are the two that people have loved. So on one side, we've got the Braden mannequin. He, this is an advanced CPR mannequin. Um, it includes the lights that show you how, how effective your CPR performance is. It's a four pack with carry bags and kneeling mats. So it's got everything you need in there. Um, and also there's the CPR Cube Pro, um, which is absolutely brilliant because it's joined to an app and it changes color when you're doing CPR so that you know you're doing it properly. And the app that can be just put on the phone, um, you can see, you know, you, you can put in a student number or a student name and you can track if they get better the next time they do it. So it's kind of good. So the CPR cube, the students can kind of get on with it while you're doing maybe a, a CPR assessment on a braid and mannequin. So they're both quite useful. And obviously how this maps with your curriculum is it performs the sequence of steps for basic life support. I see we've got another question there. Does the maestro come with the mannequin about separately? It comes with uh, Juno. It's Juno plus tablets. So it's all part of the package. That is Juno. No problem. Um, and then on to uh, monitors. So if you have, um, if, if you've decided to not go with Juno or if you've got a Juno plus a different type of mannequin, which isn't, um, responsive or if you're using a standardized patient then we've got other patient monitors and simulated softwares now these are exactly what you're going to see in a hospital and the uh, creative pc 3000 which is the the actual monitor you see on the left it doesn't come with the stand or the bag you choose which one you want obviously the bag is very um paramedic the rolling stand is very hospital ward but these um, you know, they do the uh, blood pressure. You can see the ECG on it. You've got the SATs and the respirate. 
Um, it actually comes with the sat, sat, like a pulled oximeter that goes on there, and it actually comes with the adult cuff as well. So, it, you know, dependent, you're going to have to do some form of patient monitoring, and these monitors are what your students are going to come across in placement as well. So, for me, I think it works well to have a blend. So, have a Juno or an Aries, and then use these as well. They can practice on each other, they can use it for a standardized patient, whatever, um, and just have like a few of each. The um, how this maps with your curriculum is obviously about recognizing signs and symptoms of a person's well being. They'll get used to looking at the machine and knowing like under 96 sats is a bit worrying. And then if the sats keep dropping, okay, this is really worrying. What, what are we going to do next? The blood pressure and everything. So, yeah, so that's your patient monitors. Um, we also have quite the range of assisted daily living products. Again, this is just a snapshot of what we do have. Um, we have quite a vast range. Uh, Nicola chose these two quite cleverly because of the storage uh, facilities. These can fold up and take up less room. And obviously, space is a, is a very valuable thing in college, especially when you've suddenly got to grow a ward out of no extra space whatsoever. These fold up. So we have various types of hoists. We have walking frames. We have crutches. We have wheelchairs. Sorry, I jumped ahead there, Nicola. Um, so, you know, if you look at the hoists or anything like that, we have all of the things, folding and non-folding, space saving and non-space saving. <laughs> um, and just to say how they're going to be mapped to the curriculum is obviously manual and hand, manual handling is, um, you know, regulations and training. That's how their curriculum mapped. Missed that bit. Sorry. On to the next one. So physiological measurements, as we've said, you know, they need to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms. They need to be able to do the basic patient monitoring. Um, you know, depending on, it doesn't matter where they go in their career from T level, whether they go into being a, a HCA, whether they go into nursing, whether they're going to be where I was, which is an ODP, whatever, where, whatever route it takes them, they're going to need to be able to use all of these things. So we have our pulse oximeters, which obviously measure the uh, oxygen sats in the blood. We have blood pressure monitors. I'm sure we've all had one of them done at the doctors. We've got our forehead thermometers. We also have a blood pressure simulator. So if for any reason you don't want to use a regular blood pressure monitor on each other's arms, there is a blood pressure simulator so you can simulate blood pressure being taken. Um, so yeah, we have them too. And infection control. So many, many moons ago when I was doing my ODP training, we, we had these and do you know what? They were fascinating then and they're still fascinating now. And all of the colleges that I speak to have one of these say, they're brilliant. They're brilliant because they're fully interactive. They're brilliant because people get a little bit, the students can get a little bit competitive. Who's better at cleaning their hands? Um, they're brilliant because they're teaching people hand hygiene and how to clean your hands, which I think we're all quite aware of how important that is. Um, but basically what it does is you put some lotion on your hands, which is, you can see it in UV light. Then the student goes off and they wash their hands and they come back and they put it underneath and you can see where they've missed. Um, so with this version that we have here, this has a little camera in the top of the box, which could just be connected to your, to a monitor that you already have or an um, interactive whiteboard. And then everybody can see how well they've washed their hands. And um, I suspect after maybe missing the thumbs, I say this from experience because I miss mine, you're never going to do it a second time. <laughs> Not when everybody's seen how well you've washed your hands. <laughs> so this is, um, you know, infection control, techniques for uh, hand washing and everything. This is all part of your curriculum, you know, reducing the spread of infection and everything. So nearly every college I've worked with so far have got one of these. These have been an absolute hit and the students love them. 
So empathy suits. Um, we have a range of empathy suits. We have the pregnancy ones, the obesity ones, and the geriatric simulation. Um, personally, I really love the geriatric simulation because I found, um, as a mother of teenagers, that they don't really think about how it feels when your limbs aren't as good as they used to be when you're 15 and you can run around all over. And, you know, it, it helps them get a better understanding of how that person is able to move when they're doing their manual handling and they're helping an elderly person into a chair. They'll have an understanding of the lack of flexibility and how hard it is for them to lift a leg up or how hard it is to move an arm. Um, so these are, there's no better way of teaching what that feels like than having them wear it and feel it for themselves. Obviously you'll get a few giggles and everything with it as well. But um, yeah, they're just brilliant, the empathy suits. I also have a college who uses parts of the empathy suit to mimic somebody who's had an injury. So maybe they, they can't move their leg because of an injury. So they'll just wear the leg parts and not the, the arm parts or whatever. So there's, they've got reduced mobility in other limbs. So it can be adapted to whatever it is you're trying to teach them. Um, and obviously it helps curriculum wise with the stages of human development and how that impacts the physical and mental function. So these are really good, really good things. So, oh, you love the geriatric suit. Yeah, it's honestly, it's so good. It, I, I feel like regardless of tea levels, I feel like every school should have kids in that just to get a feeling of what it's like to be an old person. It might keep people healthier. <laughs> so we also have anatomical models and charts. Now, you may have some of these charts, you, you know, because you've obviously been doing biology and things like that anyway, but we have such a range, like a vast a range of um, models, charts. They obviously cope, they map to the um, science concepts. They ha we have the, we just have everything. We have all kinds. Bit with bits coming out, bits going in. <laughs> you know, it could be just a flush poster or it's a full 3D thing. We have fully articulated skeletons, some with the uh, muscles and ligaments on there, some just a skeleton. Some have one side has the um, vascular uh, stuff going on. The other side might have nerves, whatever. We've got it all, the digestive systems, the lot. So if you're after any kind of chart, model, or skeleton, come and see us because we've got it. And the beauty of Sim and Skills is, even if we don't have it, the chances are we could get it for you because we're pretty good like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have reproductive systems and the awesome pregnancy model. So just to add in these next two slides, Obviously, you're going to have to record your ESPs. This is a sim station recording and debriefing software. Now, these, this is what simulation suites in hospitals and universities use. More hospital than university, actually. And so this is a pretty much all singing, all dancing. It's, um, it, it has everything. It has the cameras for the simulation, has a control room. You can speak through the microphone. You can stop at any point, rewind and, and play it back and have a look at it. Um, you know, the, the ability to watch back anything you've done and discuss it is always very rewarding to discuss how they can do things better or what they've done really well to help, you know, promote their confidence. So that's the audio visual recording. Um, the thing is with these is that they're specific to your site so it, it's it's built around you rather than you having to find a way for it to fit in so some people might need several cameras some people only need a, a couple you know it's yeah it's quite an adaptive system so that's our sim station 
and also we have interactive immersive spaces so these are great these are like the whole room's done out and the room can be you can be teaching an anatomy lesson in there and you can touch the wall and the the um the body will spin and you can remove parts put parts in you can simulate the ward you can simulate a ward in the local hospital where we'll go do the placements um yeah you can do many different things in interactive immersive spaces um you could even have a woodland scene and i'll sit down and have a picnic if you need a bit of a time out <laughs> don't know if that's what you're going to do but you never know that's what i would do um so yeah there's our interactive immersive spaces again this is quite a, a big thing and it can do many many things which is which is probably a whole presentation in itself but if you do have any extra questions feel free to ask and i'll do my best to answer um so yeah so that's how we deep dive into the product guide this is how you can get hold of us so i'm marie uh, at simmons skills so if you want to ask me anything or if you want to book a zoom call with me a phone call or anything just get in touch Otherwise, there's our Simmons Skills number. Or you can contact us at hello at Simmons Skills. And um, it's back to you, is it, Nicola? It is, yeah. Thank you so much, Marie. I think I've learned even more today. <laughs> I feel like I need to get myself a Jerry suit on my Christmas list. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most fun. Our, our big top secret about the pregnancy suit, or it's not so much of a secret because we've told everybody, is that Ant and Deck borrowed one of our pregnancy suits for their Saturday night takeaway. So when that airs, after Christmas at some point. I don't know if it's one of them wearing it or someone they're setting up, but our pregnancy suit will be on there. That'll be our big claim to fame. Find out. That's ours. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks everybody for posting questions as we go. That's been really, really helpful to um, answer extra questions. We're just gonna go through any questions that you've got now. Um, I'm gonna ask Marie a couple of questions that often come up when we're talking to um, colleges so it might be something you hadn't thought to ask but it, you may want to know the answer so um, the first question we often get asked is how do we place an order so we've got a very helpful screen as if we hadn't planned it at all <laughs> so that Marie will <laughs> share with you how you can easily place an order with us yeah so if you go on to our website our website is very uh, it, it's very concise there's so much stuff on there so you can have a good browse Honestly, get yourself a glass of wine, sit there for a few hours, find everything you want. And when you find something that you are interested in, you can click add to quote. And as you go through the website and you click add to quote, it will generate, when you get to the end, it will generate a quote for you, which you can be sent off. Um, it will be sent to you and then you can order from there. Instructions are on the quote. Alternatively, you can get in touch with me. I can rustle up a quote for you and talk you through it from there. So you can either be self-sufficient or Marie sufficient, whichever one you fancy. <laughs> so um, related to that, um, Naresh has asked the question, which obviously always comes up, is how do we find out about cost? Yeah, so our prices are all on the website for you to see. Um, so there is a XVAT and a VAT price. Um, we usually deal, I personally have always dealt in XVAT when I've worked with simulation because most education establishments can get their VAT back. Um, so depending on what you're interested in, XVAT or VAT price, it's there on the website for you to see. So there is no prices hidden. Or again, you can ask me for a quote and I'll tot it all up and send it off to you. Because for every, I guess for every college, everybody's ordering something slightly different. So there isn't really a ballpark figure you can give for everything if you were to get everything all together because everybody wants slightly different things. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I do, you know, I have a lot of Zoom calls with people and they say, right, this is my budget. This is what I want. How how can we make them to meet? Because we have such a vast array of things. We can usually get something working for any budget, really. It just takes a bit of conversation of working out what it is you want. And um, yeah, we take it from there, kind of teamwork. And Jonathan's asked a good question. Um, do we have any recommended room sizes for training purposes? That's a good question, room sizes. Um, I couldn't give you a size off the top of my head. If if I could give you the kind of equipment that you would put in there, the average per people are putting in there, then you can maybe work it out. So most people are doing a two or three bed ward. Um, so obviously 
whatever you need to fit your three beds, head walls, whatever in. Um, then they're like in a different section. It's either a different room or a different part of the room. If you've got a massive room, you can have your hand hygiene station, your empathy suits and things. And then you might have another part of the room with your anatomy uh, and physiological models. Um, but if you work out to start with what your budget is and how many beds you can fit into a room and then take it from there. But I would go by how, how big you want your ward. Two or three beds is what most people are doing. Excellent. So um, one of the questions we get quite a bit um, is, so if I'm if I'm due to start my course in September, it seems like a long way away, but it'll soon come along. Um, when would we need to get things ordered by? What are the sort of lead times are we looking at? Um, well, when you want to start buying it and lead times, they're quite, quite different. My answer is quite different for both, and I'll tell you why. Because me and you can sit down and have a conversation about things. We'll work out together what it is we want um, to get your sim suite up and running. But then there's certain financial hoops to jump through for yourself with your own colleges. Um, they might want things from us. We might want things from them before we move it forward. So I would say if you were setting up for September, start talking to me in June. Have that June, July, August. September. Have that like four months kind of um run up so that everything's in place and your stuff's there ready to go when you start in september alternatively the the lead time on products if you buy an individual products they really do vary from uh, from product to product our beds can come really quickly because they are just in the uk and the closer you are to that factory the quicker you're going to get it um whereas some things may have to be brought into the country so they may may take eight to ten weeks so you know, it, it, it's a it's a good question, but it varies. But the sooner you start, the more likely you are to have it in place in time. That's what I would say. Excellent. Thanks very much. Um, and then I've got one more question. We'll see if anybody else has got any other questions. Um, so do we offer any training for any of the products that we've seen today in the product guide? Well, obviously, I'm here. I'm available for most conversations. But if you want actual full on training with your um, Aries or your Juno if you are doing Aries before March um, the training is free if it get, if it's ordered before March you get free training with Aries and any training with Juno is it an additional cost and as an aside to that we are in talks at the moment with um, CAE who are the manufacturers um, of Juno and Aries about putting together um, some some sort of specialised training for T-level health providers um, that we could perhaps have um, regionally is what we're looking at at the moment. So we haven't, we're in the very early stages of those, but what the when we did the last webinar, we sort of floated the idea and everybody was really positive. I think everybody wants to be able to get their hands on some training as much as they possibly can. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out. Um, if you, as you registered for this webinar, you'll get our regular email updates from T-Level. So as soon as we've got information for any training events, um, we'll let you know. But as Marie said, um, if you want training at your own, um, college or school, um, then we can arrange that for you. But the Aries one is free if you purchase an Aries before March. Right. I think, see if we have more questions. I think that might be all of the questions. So um, thank you so much for that, Marie. That was so um, beneficial. I think everybody on the call has found it really beneficial as well. Yeah. Um, as um, Marie said, please feel free to, um, to email her. I'll just pop her email address back in the chat. So you it's can... a weird way of spelling Marie. So. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't spell her name incorrectly. It's not going to get there. Yeah. So please <laughs> copy that. But I'm really approachable, though. So if you want to just have a chat with me about things and how, it, how you think it's going to work for you, even if you have no idea right now, feel free to, to email me. and We can book a time and we can have a chat on the phone or over Zoom or whichever works. Yep, so thank you so much, um, everybody, for joining us this evening, taking the time to join us. We know as teachers, it's a really hectic time for you. So we really appreciate you spending the evening with us. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and I hope you make it to the end of term <laughs> successfully. And have a long time. Not long now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.